This is a reading from Akita, The Tears and Message of Mary. I'll pick up from where I was cut off yesterday. I'll overlap slightly. She joined the other sisters who brought a sack of cotton. Five of the sisters, with great care and devotion, sponged the perspiration. The entire body was soaked. They had to dry and dry. A liquid similar to heavy sweat oozed without stopping, especially on the forehead and the neck. In addition to the general amazement, there was a shared feeling of grief. Sister Kay prayed with tears in her voice, Holy Mary, pardon us for causing you so much sadness and pain. We beg you pardon for our sins and our faults. Protect us, help us. Each sister applied herself to drying the area before her eyes with the same common intention of reparation and veneration. The pieces of cotton were wringing wet. <clears throat> After dinner, the community returned to see the statue. It was again wet with perspiration. Distracted, the sisters began again to dry it. One even heard Sister O, not naturally talkative, murmur in a sad voice, My cotton does not absorb. One would say that there is no perspiration when I dry. Immediately, as if in answer to her anguished words, the cotton that she was holding began to absorb the perspiration like a sponge plunged into water, which impressed her very much. Suddenly, one of the sisters remarked that the cottons had a fragrant odor. Each one began to smell the cotton she was holding, and they discovered a subtle fragrance which they could not describe as rose, violet, or lily. There was, a general, there was general delight. One had never experienced such a marvelous fragrance. And when Sister O declared that not even the most subtle of perfumes gives, us, gives off such a sweet fragrance, it was indeed the opinion of everyone. They were asking if this might not be the perfume of paradise. The following Sunday, when they, enter, they, when they entered the chapel, they were struck with the same perfume. The superioress went to see whether the fragrance was coming from the statue, while the others, remaining in place, felt enveloped in its delicious waves. The grief of the previous evening caused by the discovery of the perspiration gave way to peace and joy, which shone on all the faces. This fragrance remained for a long time in the chapel. Each time one entered, one had the impression of being transported into heaven. October 7th, the Feast of the Holy Rosary. Sister Agnes applied herself to saying each bead of the rosary with particular attention, and the hearts of all the community seemed in the maternal embrace of Mary and lifted up in a spontaneous transport to the Lord. Sister Agnes felt so happy that she asked herself how long this might last, if that could continue for the whole month of the rosary. And immediately the angel appeared at her right and lightly shaking her head said with a smile, only until the 15th after which you will no longer be able to experience this fragrance on the earth. You also amass merits as so many delicate perfumes. In bending all your efforts to this, under the protection of Mary, you will succeed. Saying this, she disappeared. As the angel predicted, the perfume remained until the 15th of October. It was especially strong on the 3rd, Feast of St. Therese of Lisieux, and on the 15th, which was the last day. For all the sisters, this grace was a great consolation. They saw in it an encouragement to support all the difficulties which would present themselves in the days to come. <clears throat> Although Sister Agnes has, has played a key role in all of these events, it was obviously, obviously now a community matter. Had not Our Lady said that each member of the community was dear to her and that she was gathering together souls who would pray, make reparation, and console the Lord? From now on, all the community will be ever more deeply involved both in the wonders that are to follow and in the trials to be endured. Now all the sisters had seen the light shining from the statue, as all of them had experienced the sense of grief because of the blood flowing from a wound in Our Lady's hand. So now also they said they felt a sense of grief as they each participated in drying a miraculous perspiration which emanated from the statue in such quantity that it soaked the cotton they used to dry it. It is proper to reflect on this metamorphosis of the statue of Our Lady on the Feast of St. Michael, who is venerated as the Holy Patron of Japan. The trace of the wound on the hand, which had been there for three months, disappeared at the moment when the statue shone forth with a dazzling light. That evening, all the sisters were eyewitness, eyewitnesses of the real prodigy of the wound disappearing and of the perspiration. And when the cotton was sent to the official laboratory of the University of Akita, the scientists found, as we shall explain later, that it was human. These were visible and now scientific proofs 
that what was happening here was truly from heaven. Further was the fact that the cotton impregnated with perspiration from the statue itself exhaled a subtle and unknown perfume, an unquestionable supernatural sign. I myself arrived at Yuza Wadai six months after this event. When the sisters spoke to me about it, in the beginning I did not know what to think. I didn't see the need of verifying the truths of the facts because I was sure that a judgment would be rendered in good time on the entire matter. One day when I was receiving a visitor, one of the sisters brought one of the pieces of cotton so that he could smell the perfume. When I saw his reaction, I smelled it in turn. It was not very sure of my ability. I was not very sure of my ability in this regard because I had undergone an operation on my nose in my childhood. It was true. To my surprise, it gave off an ineffably subtle fragrance, not even equaled by a rose. My hesitations and doubts suddenly fell away, and I had the immediate feeling that this was a question of an important event. So I can imagine the impact it must have had on each of the sisters when they actually dried the statue and then experienced this wonder. Like St. Thomas, do we not all have a tendency not to believe what we do not see, what we do not touch with our fingers, what we do not verify with our senses? From that moment, I have been led progressively to be the witness of the mysterious phenomena of which I write. The Guardian Angels I would like to go back here to something which happened a few days before. It was the 2nd of October, Feast of the Holy Guardian Angels. One can easily understand <clears throat> the joy and thanks thanksgiving of Sister Agnes on that day. She who had communicated with her guardian angel in person from the time that she no longer could hear how many times had the angel not appeared to extend a helping hand. She had even given Sister Agnes counsel, encouragement, and assurance of her protection. She must have been so happy to be able to assist at the Mass celebrated by the bishop to pray and to thank her guardian angel for so many graces received in this very chapel. Sister Agnes recounts what she experienced during the Mass. It was during the Mass at 6.30 in the morning, at the moment of consecration, a dazzling light suddenly shone forth. It was the same as I had seen during three days beginning on the 12th of June, and which had so much overwhelmed me. I had the feeling that this adorable splendor was that of the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Eucharist, Struck to the heart, I could only repeat, My Lord and my God. At the same moment, there appeared the outline of angels in prayer before the shining host. They were kneeling all around the altar in a semicircle, their backs towards us. There were eight of them. Evidently, they were not human beings, and when I say kneeling, that doesn't mean to say that I saw their legs or how they really were. It is difficult, precisely, to describe their clothing. All that one can say is that they seemed to be enveloped in a sort of white light. Certainly they resembled human beings, but they did not have the air either of children or adults. How to say, finally, beings to whom one could not give the age. This said, one could see also that they were not the fruit of an optical illusion, and, they were, and that they were truly there. They did not have wings, but their bodies were enveloped in a sort of mysterious luminescence which clearly distinguished them from humans. Amazed, not believing my eyes, I opened and closed them, rubbed them, but nothing changed. All eight were there to adore the most blessed sacrament in an attitude of great devotion. Before so strange a sight, either I was too moved or even overcome by the brilliance of the light. I thought of nothing else and forgot to respond to the prayers. Since the chapel is quite small and I was in the front row, a little to the left of the altar, I found myself completely absorbed by this luminous scene which unfolded before my eyes. Not that my movements were not in accord with the others who rose and knelt, but quite simply, I believe that I thought of nothing else. At the moment of communion, my guardian angel approached me to invite me to advance to the altar. At that moment, I clearly distinguished the guardian angels of each member of the community, close to their left shoulders, and of the height a little smaller than each. Like my guardian angel, they gave truly the impression of guiding and watching over them with sweetness and affection. This scene in itself opened my eyes to the profound meaning of the guardian angel, better than had any theological explanation, even the most detailed. After dinner, I gave the complete account of this vision to the bishop. There were indeed eight angels there at the moment, while we were seven. With the bishop, it made eight. Had they not chosen the feast of the guardian angels to show the example of adoration and to reveal their readiness to lead us to the Lord?
Here's a picture of Bishop Akito. Sorry, Bishop Ito at the Akita convent. <coughs> Chapter 7, the third message of the Virgin. <clears throat> it was Saturday, the 13th of October, the anniversary day of the great miracle of Fatima, a miracle witnessed by about 100,000 people and performed by Our Lady at, the, at that predicted time and place.